You've probably noticed that Donald Trump has turned the presidency into an extension of his corporate brand. We make the finest wine, and we have Trump steaks. Of his daughter's brand. Go second. buy Ivanka's stuff. And of his wife's future plans to be a brand. Trump's lawyer is charging that it put in peril her, quote, unique, once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to make millions. It's gross. That's a given. But for a moment, let's set aside how craven and seedy it all is and get strategic. If the president is a brand first and a politician a distant second, that gives his opponents all kinds of leverage. 17 years ago, I wrote a book called No Logo. It was about how, as companies and people morphed into super brands, they faced new vulnerabilities. Coca-Cola, Disney, McDonald's, these core American brands became powerful precisely because they understood that they were selling ideas instead of products. Because brand-based companies derive their value from being tightly associated with a particular image or big idea, if that image gets sullied, they're in serious trouble. We used to call this culture jamming or ad busting, flipping the marketing power behind a brand to tell a competing story about the sweatshops in which the clothes were made or the environmental devastation left behind. Any brand can be jammed. You just need to understand the image they're selling. Now, culture jamming fell out of fashion for a while, but with Trump, everything 90s is new again, especially his core brand identity, money. More specifically, Trump's brand is being the boss who is so rich, he can do whatever he wants. You're fired. That's his twisted niche. That's why the supermodel. Hi, thanks. It's Melania Trump. And the endless shots of his private jet that's why Trump's relationship to gold is the inverse of Superman's relationship to kryptonite. He crumples if he's more than three feet away from something really, really shiny. Now that we know exactly what the brand is, it's obvious how to mess with it. Step one, fire the boss. Can I have my desk back? Yes, of course, Mr. President, I'll go sit at my desk. Now, lots of you have already figured this out. If Trump's personal brand is being the boss, the way to jam that is to make him look like a puppet. This guy's puppet, or this guy's puppet, or this guy's puppet. It doesn't really matter who's yanking the strings, as long as the strings are there to be seen. So why was Bannon demoted? Apparently, Trump has been bothered by the public perception that Bannon is actually the one in charge. Oh my God, Donald, I am so sorry. <laughs> I never, I never would have called Steve Bannon the president if I knew it hurt your feelings so much. More, please. Anything that chips away at Trump's carefully nurtured image of being the guy in charge. Step two, make Richie Rich less rich. Trump's brand is all about having bags and bags of money. I'm really rich. Which means that the other way to jam his brand is to make him less rich. Now, I don't mean make him seem less rich. No, I mean actively take money from him by sending his branding empire into crisis. This can happen. This is already happening. There's the grab your wallet campaign, the clearing house for boycotts of Trump's web of brands. And check this out. And it's not just long ties and short skirts. I'm back. This guy says Celebrity Apprentice tanked because people didn't want to watch or sponsor a show associated with the President of the United States. But Trump's brand fights back hard. I'm gonna give a free okay. commercial here. Go buy it today, everybody. Entirely unburdened by ethics. And it may even be working. Ivanka's company claims that ever since the White House turned itself into the home shopping network, Trump's sales have actually spiked, which is why it's time for step three, go after the big fish. One of the largest sources of revenue for the Trump organization is leasing Trump's name to real estate companies around the world. Developers pay millions for the supposed privilege of putting the big golden Trump name on the facade of their buildings. Now, Trump is clearly betting that being president will drive up the price. But what if he's wrong? What if his brand becomes such trash that developers are willing to pay to take it down? That actually already happened in New York City when tenants of Trump Place demanded that their building manager de-Trumpify their home. And this is what happened when the Trump boys went to Vancouver to celebrate the opening of the latest Trump temple. If these kinds of protests keep spreading, more developers could decide to de-Trump themselves. We know how well Trump handled Nordstrom dropping his daughter's accessories line. How do you think he'd handle seeing his golden name dropped from giant phallic symbols from Vancouver to Manila? I say, let's find out. Step four, be a nuisance. 
Boycotts and sidewalk protests aren't the only way to wreak havoc with Trump's businesses. What if a whole lot of people made reservations at Trump hotels and resorts, and then all those people changed their minds right before the cancellation deadline? Now, I'm not suggesting anyone do this, of course. I'm just wondering what would happen. And what if customers who really did want to book reservations had a hard time getting through because so many other people were calling to express their views on Trump's attacks on the EPA or mass detentions of immigrants or losing their health insurance? I never said repeal it and replace it within 64 days. I have a long time. Now, if you go this route, please be polite. The person answering the phone almost certainly gets paid less than they deserve and could be secretly trying to form a union. If any of this strikes you as unfair, please consider this. The whole reason we expect politicians to divest from their financial holdings or put them in a real blind trust is because you can influence a sitting politician through their business interests. Trump has chosen not to divest. So let's use that to influence the hell out of him and let's put him in some conflicts of interest he hasn't bargained for. Believe me, this is Trump's Achilles heel. Traveling to Washington, having a protest to try to convince Republican senators to develop a conscience? Well, it's worth a try, I guess. But systematically eroding the brand of a man who is banking on profiting from his presidency both during and after his term in office? That will most certainly grab the attention of the grabber-in-chief. Grab him by the pussy. <laughs> I can do anything. The most important thing to remember is this. The essence of good branding is repetition. And the same thing goes for good brand jamming. So go forth and repeat thyselves. The president isn't a boss, he's a puppet. The president is getting less rich by the day. If his brand gets battered enough, Trump might just course correct on some of his more whacked out policies. And at the very least, screwing with his central pitch to voters, trust me, I'm a successful billionaire, will hurt Trump's chances in 2020. That is, if his giant head doesn't explode before then. Have fun out there.